Reading and writing Hebrew is fun and easy. All you have to do is to know the Hebrew vowels, six of them, and the Hebrew letters, 22 letters. You put those together and you can read Hebrew. Let's take a look again at all of the stuff that we've done so far in those programs. We learned the letters, we learned the vowels, and we put them together in words that we were trying to read. All of this information also exists in the book, in the Aleph Bet book that goes along with this program. And in a minute, you can see that flashed on the screen. The Aleph Bet book will contain each one of the letters. Stroke by stroke will show you how to write the letter. And then you can uh, practice it. There is a lot of place, uh, a lot of room for practice and um, reading practices and so on. So those of you who have the book can work with me while I'm talking. Um, look at the book and, and see where to put your letters in and how to write them. To start, I want to go over the Hebrew vowels just to remind us because those are very important element in the reading process. And here they are. We have an A sound with a horizontal line underneath. Any one of those in combinations would work to produce the sound of A. The A sound, two horizontal dots or three hanging grapes, whatever, underneath the letter will produce the sound of A. The E sound is produced by putting a dot underneath the, he, the, the letter and or a letter Yud next to the letter. The letter Yud is the 10th letter of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, and it's the smallest letter. It's used occasionally as a grammatical helper. In this case, the Yud next to the letter produce, produces the sound of E. A letter and a vav and a dot on top. The dot on top produce it, produces the sound of O. So when you want to cr create an O, here it is. You put a dot on top, and occasionally you'll see also a vav, which is the sixth letter of the aleph bed. And again, it's used as a grammatical helper in this case. So the vav and the yud are used to help create sounds. In this case, it's the sound of O. The sound of U goes in two ways. Either you have a vav and a dot in the middle, U, or you have three diagonal dots underneath the letter to create this, to produce the sound of U. And the last one is the U, uh, which is a short vowel. I'm going to work to the string of letters, the aleph bet, and we'll go over it real quick again, just to remind us. Here it is. Aleph bet, gimel, dalet, hey, hey, vav, zayin, chet, tet, yud, kaf, lamed, mem, nun, samech, ayin, peh, tzadik, kuf, resh, Shihin Taf, and this is the entire thing, all of the Hebrew letters, sung in a little song. Let me show you how to write today. I want to go to the letter Sheen. It's a beautiful letter, and it's made this way. You go half a circle, and a line in the middle. That's a sheen. And you will see the sheen in different formats. So this is only one of them. You, you, some sheens would look like this. Some sheens would look like this. And so on. So these are all just what we call in English fonts. They're different fonts, different ideas, but the basic idea of the letter is still there. The letter sheen is numerically 300, and it produces 
a sound that we do not have in English a specific letter for it. The letter, you can transliterate it as SH. Sh. In Hebrew, we have a special letter for it, and that's the letter Sheen. Now, the Sheen is also interesting because it has two forms. Here is your Sheen, and it has a dot on the right side. The dot on the right side produces the SH sound. The dot, if it's on the left side, produces just an S sound. So it's called a seen. So here is sheen versus seen. So it's easy to remember. The right side is the sh sound. The left side is an S sound. Where you look where the dot is, and it will tell you. What can we do with the letter sheen? One word that we can write with the letter sheen, actually more than one sheen, is this one. Here is the vowels. We have a sheen with an A sound. We have a mem with an A sound. So that's she, me, and a sheen, shemesh, shemesh. Shemesh is sun. But it's interesting that the word shemesh come from a root of sheen, mem, sheen, that will look like this, sheen, mem, sheen. Then we do the dots or the periods after each one of the letters just to distinguish it from a word. So people will not think that this is a word. This is a root. So roots we write like this. We separate the letters by a dot. So this root, the sheen mem sheen root, implies or has a concept of servant. Shamash is a servant in Hebrew. This is why on the Hanukkah candles, you have nine candles. You have eight candles for each one of the days of the holidays, of the holiday, and then you have one candle that is usually above the others, and it's called shamash, which is the servant. You light the other candles with it. So shemesh, which is a sun, as bright as it might be, comes from the root that the concept of that root is servant. Now the question to ask would be, why are we calling the sun, the almighty sun, with this billions of of, of uh, degrees of temperature, so powerful. Why do we call it a servant? And the interesting is, the interesting thing is, is to note that the sun, with all of its power, is really a death trap. If we were just a little bit closer to it, or a little bit farther from it, then life, the way we know it, would not exist would not be able to exist. We are in a perfect distance from the sun to sustain temperatures that now we're talking about global warming and, and two degrees or one degree or, 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 or change, slight change in the temperature, and we are all excited about that. But that balance was kept for, for millions of years. And um, you can ask yourself, that balance to keep the sun in the perfect distance from us, if the temperature goes 100 degrees down or 100 degrees up, it will destroy civilization, mankind, and all life on Earth. So how is it possible that the sun is kept at bay for such a long period of time to allow us to live? 
So the sun is really the life giver of life on earth, but only under a condition that it will be tamed. It will be in a specific distance from us to sustain this kind of life. So the sun is really the servant of all life. It's serving life on earth. So it's called Shemesh, from Shamash, from servant. That's an interesting connection. How about a word that most people heard? Here it is. We have a Shin. Lame. Vav. And a Mem. In this case, Mem Sofit. And it's read this way, sheen with an ah sound. Now, where is the dot on the sheen? It's on the right side. So that will produce an sh sound. If the dot was on the left side, that would be an s sound. But in this case, it's sha. Then we have a lamed and a vav and a dot on top. A dot on top is an o sound. So we have sha and lo, and the word is ending with a mem. This case is a mem sofit. Why is it mem sofit? Because the mem happened to fall at the end of this word. So we use the ending form, graphical form, of that letter. It doesn't change the sound or the letter or anything else. It's just a graphical form, this symbol, which is changing. So how to read this word? is sheen with an a sound, sha, then lamed with an o sound and a vav, lo, and a mem, shalom. How many of you heard the word shalom? Okay, mean peace. <laughs> Another word is this, sheen and a lamed. Sheen with an A sound, she, and a lamed, shell. Shell is a word for belonging in Hebrew. And you can conjugate it in many ways. You have mine, yours, theirs, all of these words are conjugated from shell. Sheli, shelcha, shelanu, all of those words come from shell. So it's, it's a word of belonging, of possession, shell. Now let's double the second letter of that word. See what happens. So what is the second letter? Is the lamed. So we write a sheen, then put a lamed next to it, then put another lamed next to that. Voweled it, a sound, and another a sound. The letter sheen with an a sound is sha, and of course the dot is on the right side, so we read it sh sheen, like an sh, so that's sha. Then we have a lamed with an a sound, la, and another lamed, shalal. Shalal is a loot, is what you get when you conquer a city and you take their possessions after you kill everybody. So shalal, is that which you loot from uh, a war, after a war. And you can see that it's, it contains shell, which is the possession, the word for possession, and it doubles it. It's possession of possession. It's what you take in a war. So that's just a little thinking about how the grammar works just starting to understand some things. Let's use some more words, make some room on the board. Remember the word that we talked about earlier in one of the early programs, and that is spelled this way.
The way it's read is yud with an e sound, yi. We have a, a sin this way, this time, with an uh sound. Now, why is it a sin, an S sound? Because the dot is on the left side. If the dot was on the right side, that will be an SH sound. But on the left is an S sound. So it's YIS, RESH with an A sound, YIS, RA, Aleph with an A sound, E, and a Lamed, YISRAEL. So YISRAEL utilized the SIN, which is a SHIN with a left side dot, and what it means is you can, there are several explanations to that, but that is the name the angel that Jacob fought with gave him after that night that they fought. He said, you were able to fight and succeed with gods and with people, and this why your name from now on will be Yisrael. So one explanation is that, that it has Sar with El. El is God, and Sar is a prince, and God is a Yud, which is the infinity of God. So all of this put together in a mix of a person who can deal with people and deal with God. Another explanation is this, and that is Yashar, which is straight, and El, of course, is Elohim, is God. So you were straight with God, a straight person, a straight heart, a straight with God, Yashar El. And there, there are many different views of the word Yisrael. This is the letter Shin and the letter Sin. And the last letter that I want to talk about is the letter Tav, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Tav. Let me make some room on the board. And we will work with the letter Tav. The letter Tav, the numerical value of that letter is 400. And it's written, again, with the same simple elements that most of the Hebrew letters are written with. And watch my hand. It starts going back and down. Now, that's exactly how we start to write the letter resh, right? Now we put a noon just in front of it, and we get a taf. So the taf is made of a resh and a noon standing in front of it. That is the tav. The word tav. is written that way, tav with an ah sound, and then vav next to it. The meaning of it is a sign, tav is a sign, or a letter. So we have uh, the meaning of the letter tav, and let's look at some words that we can utilize here. How about the word, a short word, ayin, and a tav? Ayin with an a sound is a, and a tav is the t, et. Et means time. So when we're looking at the a string of uh, years of history or um, our holidays or specific times, we call them et or etim, which is the plural. Here is another word. Let 
We have a Tav, Vav, Resh, and a He. Some of you probably heard this word, and it's read this way. We have a Tav and a Vav next to it and a dot on top. Dot on top creates the sound of O, right? So we have To, and then we have a Resh with an A sound and a He that has no sound. That's to ra, to ra. So those of you who heard about the Torah, that's how you spell it. Here is a complicated word, but I'm sure most of you have heard it. Let's take a look at that. We have a mem, a tav, a vav, Sheen, and a Lamed, and a Chet. Lots of letters, right? Let's see how this word is vowed. We have an E sound, a Taf, and a Vav, and a Dot in the middle. It's an U sound. Sheen, because the Dot is on the right side, an A sound to the Sheen, and an A sound. And those of you who can read it by now is this. Me, taf and a vav and an u sound, that's two. Sheen with an a sound, that's she. Lamed with an a sound is a la. And het. And it's read me, tu, she, lach. Metushelach in Hebrew. In English, it became Methuselah, right? <laughs> so that is his name. He not only had long life, but he also had a long name. That's one of the things, one of the benefits of being Methuselah, Methuselah. Okay? How about a very good word? Here it is. Let's make some room. Here is a word, start with a tav, here is a pei, yud, lamed, and a hey. Voweled this way, and read as follows. Here's a tav with an a uh sound, t, then we have a Hey, with a yud and a dot underneath, which makes an e sound, but the pay is not dot, there's no dot in the middle of the pay to make it strong. If it was with a dot, with a dagesh, that would have been a p sound. Without the dot, it's an f sound. So we have te, fi, and then lamed and an a sound, and a he with no sound. We have, why is it no sound? Because there is no vowel on it. So it's here for grammatical reasons. We have te fi la. Te fi la is a prayer. Okay, so the Hebrew prayer is te fi la. What's interesting about the Hebrew prayer, te fi la, is that it has in it the word Tafel. Let's take the taf, put them together, taf, the pei, and the lamed. We have a tav with an a sound. We have a pei, a fe really, with an a sound, and we have a lamed. So we read ta fel. Tafel means tasteless, with no, no purpose, no reason. Now, why would a prayer call something tasteless? Because the prayer is made for us. And when God is looking at it, if we don't have the power or, or the, the, the direction and the meaning that comes from the heart, then it's no, no consequence and no meaning to, to God. It meaning, it's meaningful to God 
when we have something of our heart in it. And it me it's meaningful to us if we have our heart in it. So go ahead and pray with a lot of power that comes from your heart and a meaning that comes from your heart. Thank you for joining us in learning something about reading and writing Hebrew today. I hope that this program will motivate you to continue in your quest for more knowledge and understanding of God's Word. I would like to invite you to visit our website at www.musicfromgod.com music to explore some of our products and Hebrew learning aids. Make sure to order the Aleph Bet book and CD that will complement the teachings you are watching on this station and help you practice an understanding better. Learning Hebrew is fun and rewarding. Come visit us at our website, www.musicfromgod.com, musicfromgod.com, or call us at 602-48-BIBLE, 602-48-BIBLE. See you again soon, and shalom.